Mona El Tahoui is a columnist and speaker on Arab and Middle Eastern affairs, a frequent contributor to Connect. She met Tom McMaster years ago and followed Amina's story closely without realizing they were the same person. Taken in by the illusion, like so many others, Mona is here in Toronto tonight. Now I know Mona is for real too, after we've only had an online relationship. <laughs> You're the real deal, Mona. Great to see you. Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me. I'm actually a 40-year-old American, no, Egyptian, pretending to be an American <laughs> gay man. <laughs> I don't want any more pretensions here. Let's see if we can get the real deal here. But listen, you were following Amina's story. Um, what, what did she become for you? Well, you know, I first found her on The Guardian. So I think, you know, that this really is exactly what your previous guest was saying. This really is egg on the face of the mainstream media for not looking at the story closely enough and really verifying who this woman was. That's how I found her, through the mainstream media, not online. Hmm. And, you know, I was listening to uh, the interview that uh, McMaster gave, the McMaster mind behold, behind this whole thing. He says, I do not believe that I have harmed anyone in doing what he did. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, when I first found out that it was him and his wife, and I've met them both, you know, I remember when I, when I, when I met them back in 2008, 2009, and I knew Tom online in 2006, they seemed to me like very good people. So it's one of those situations where you think, how could someone who back then seemed good and well-intentioned do something so stupid? And clearly, especially with the fake kidnapping, they harmed a lot of people. And all along, and I think this is very important to remember, our attention should be on the Syrian revolution. Our attention should be on real Syrians that we know are really suffering. And, and the revolution in Syria is not about blogging. The revolution is about courage and feet on the ground. And we know, for example, that a 13-year-old Syrian boy called Hamza al-Khatib was really on the ground, courageously demonstrating against the Assad regime, and he paid with his life, and his body was mutilated. So I think the attention, this is the big lesson now, the attention should go on the real, courageous activists on the ground. There are many courageous online activists I personally know, but we must pay much more attention to verifying that they really are real because so much time was wasted on this Amina rubbish, it took attention away from where it belongs, the Syrian revolution. Well, you know, McMaster, though, his argument is that he was doing this to draw attention to what was happening in Syria, to draw attention to the activists by creating this fictional character. So he would agree with you, he just chose different means to make a point. And I think what's also ironic in that is that, you know, the Syrians and most people I know in the Arabic blogosphere were not as obsessed with Amina as those outside of the Middle East and North Africa. So this is a lesson as well for those observing the revolutions and uprisings from outside. Because the Assad regime and so many other regimes keep the media out, people become desperate for sources of information. But it's absolutely imperative to understand that some of those people online, like Tom, I mean, this is really what he's damaged. I know many LGBT activists in the Middle East and many others who are courageous and speak out, but they need to remain anonymous for, for concerns for their lives. Life. And, and these are genuine concerns and I think this is anonymity and how we use the internet is something that we're still learning about and we shouldn't let something this ridiculous and this irresponsible from someone like Tom and his wife to detract away from the real risks people take by going online and tell us what it's like to be a lesbian say in Beirut or to be a gay man in Cairo because that's really important information and someone like Tom who squandered that opportunity away must not distract us away from the real courageous people on the ground. Do you feel had by Tom? You know, I did, honestly, I did not follow Gay Girl in Damascus a lot, but I did bring her up in conferences as an example of, of the many courageous Arab women who speak out and use the internet uh, to express themselves. Something similar happened in 2005 when, uh, when I found a blog called Saudi Girl. It was about a young Saudi woman. And two years later, it turned out it was written by a Saudi man who pretended he was a Saudi woman. So this kind of thing has happened and will continue to happen. I think it's important, as I said, to focus on the people we know and make sure that they are, re they are genuine people, but ultimately focus on the courage that takes people out to stand up to butchers and vicious dictators like the Assad regime. Mona, always great to get your views. Thanks so much for talking to us tonight. Thanks, Mark.